the duo is here, Halo is back, and Fortnite, well, they're making a huge bet. Happy Friday, friends. It is, well, the middle of August as I try to shove my phone into my pocket so you don't hear it vibrating on the desk when people send me messages. I hope that you had a good week because it has been an interesting week in the world of Microsoft and gaming, quite candidly, because it was a quiet week in some regards, and then in other regards, it was there were massive announcements. So we'll just start it off with the tech news because Microsoft had a huge week, and they announced the Surface Duo. Coming in at 1,400 dinero, you get a foldable device with six gigs of ram a snapdragon 855 no nfc no 5g and uh, an average camera or something along those lines nothing at least on paper looks absolutely phenomenal now obviously 1400 dollars is not cheap that is a super premium device and if you compare it to a vanilla style l, l phone iphone if you will it it's it's very expensive uh, 1400 is very expensive regardless but if you compare it to something like say the galaxy fold um it's not so you know super uber premium but but it is still $1,400. I don't have one uh, for review quite yet. It's not coming out until September 10th. Hopefully, I will get one uh, before that arrives. But, um, you know, it's an interesting device. I think it puts productivity first. And if that's your jam, then this might be something that is for you. And quite candidly, if you've been ever bought a, a Lumia, this might be a device for you because this is Microsoft you know, this is a Microsoft phone. This is the Surface phone that people have been wanting for years. It is super thin. Battery life is going to be interesting. They're saying around 15 and a half hours, something like that. But we all know that Surface battery life is optimistic, but it's also not a laptop, something that you use, you know, 24 hours a day or something like I'm using right here where you're just sitting and looking at it. We will see. We will see. There's, the jury is still out. There's certainly a lot of opinion flying around about if this device will or will not succeed. The one thing I can tell you is that it either will or will not succeed here only in in the US, only here in the US, because that's the only place you can buy it. Now, it will work on AT&T, at least they will be available in AT&T retail stores, but there will also be a version that works on Verizon and T-Mobile. So if you live here in the US, you should be able to find an iteration of the device that will work on your carrier if that is what you want to do. If you're outside the US, you might be able to get one as long as you really just got to check into the bands that are supported um, for the LTE and, and call quality and all that stuff to see if it'll work locally for you. And if it does, then you might be able to get this thing to work. Um, but for now, it's only going on sale in the US at AT&T, Best Buy, and the Microsoft Store. And so that is how you're going to have to buy this thing through its limited sort of release. Now, the question is, why is Microsoft only doing this here in the US? Uh, well, they have a pretty rich history of doing that, right? With the band, the Zune, and all the other stuff. Now, those devices sometimes did make it to other markets, but they never really came, they never really launched, I believe, like whole hog around the globe at the same time. Microsoft still in the back of their mind always has that Surface RT thinking, oh gosh, what if we have another one of those devices? And so here we are with another device uh, coming out, US only, coming in September. So good luck if you want to buy one. Um, we'll be curious to see how this shakes out. I'm cautiously optimistic that I, uh, I I think it'll do okay. But again, I'd like to point out that it's for a very, very specific demographic. Uh, people who like Surface products, you know, and people who are looking productivity first because it, it's just missing some of the basics of a smartphone. Microsoft actually tried to avoid the term smartphone. They, they kept referring to it as like a mobile PC, sort of a mobile computing device. It does run Android, keep in mind too. So you're gonna have all the Google stuff on there um, because that's what Microsoft had to do. Although they keep talking about how they work closely with Google to develop this. And so here we are. Anyways, the Surface Duo, I think most people are quite familiar with that. Moving on, Apple is preparing an all-in-one subscription for October, not surprising. I mean, considering they, what they now have arcade, they have news, they have TV. Uh, and they also have gaming and they've, they've got the, you know, they've got a music. I can't forget music. And so there's going to be, you know, a way to give Apple more money for more services, but less when bundled. No surprise. It might be called Apple One, according to Bloomberg. And so be look on that on the lookout for that this fall if you are paying for a bunch of different Apple services. On to the gaming news of the week because there were, well, there, there were some cataclysmic bombshells coming out uh, across multiple different companies. And we'll start with Epic because Epic did something very interesting this week that is going to have a huge focus on in-app purchases, app purchases through Google and Apple. And what they have done is they laid a trap for Apple and Apple fell right for it. So what they did was they updated Fortnite on iOS and, and Android, which we'll get to in a second, and allowed users to either buy in-app in-app purchases or subscriptions in general through Apple 
or through directly through Epic. And it was a $2 price difference and the user just had to pick the option. And of course, Apple didn't like this because all payments must go through Apple if you buy it through the App Store, or download it through the App Store, and Apple has these guidelines in place. This is a well-known story. Once Epic made this change, Apple pulled Fortnite, which is a massively popular game, no surprise there. And then Epic sued instantly. As soon as that app went out, Epic filed the lawsuit in civil court, and they also released a parody of Apple's 1984 ad, and it's quite good, and you should go watch what Epic has done. They were completely ready for this. They set the trap. Apple tripped it, and the you know the ball is now rolling down the legal courts about this. This is going to put Apple and Google eventually into the limelight for antitrust. Is their in-app payment process anti-competitive, anti-consumer? That is, I'm not here to decide that right now. I'm not a legal expert, and I'm not going to even pretend to be. This is something the courts are going to be hearing out, and this is going to take a very long time. Now, the question is, how long is Epic willing to sit on the sidelines while this battle plays out? Because they also got pulled from Google Store. Google said, hey, we're not going to allow that either and so right now the only way to get fortnite onto an ios device is to buy an ios device that has it pre-installed already so maybe those things like the flappy bird stuff are going to raise in value on the android side you can technically sideload fortnite if you know how to do it but i'm going to go ahead and presume that many mom and pops who actually bought bought android devices don't know how to do this for their 13 or 14 year old and so you know, holistically speaking, Fortnite's mobile growth is going to be stalled while this happens. It's a big financial risk for Epic, but they have the dollars and cash flow to support this. We will see how this shakes out. It is going to be something that is going to be watched. Everybody should be watching this, not just gamers, but just in general, the developers for mobile ecosystem type devices and applications and all that are going to be impacted by the result of this lawsuit. Is Epic going to cave and actually just turn back over and be like, look, we need the money? Or are they going to stand fast and, and keep this lawsuit going? They've got the cash flow to support all the lawyers that need to happen. Only time will tell, but this is a big one to watch. Also, Xbox Series X coming in November. No surprise there. Uh, Microsoft officially confirmed that. It also looks like it might be around November 6th. Let me qualify that and say the controllers that have been leaking all over the place are expected to hit retail shelves November 6th. Now, that might be about the same time that the Series X arrives. We will find out. Uh, but at least those controllers, I tweeted it out earlier in the week and says it looks like November 6th is uh, sort of the target deadline for that stuff. Now, the other big news this week is Mr. Phil Spencer did another interview. He's been making the media rounds. Feel free to call me, Phil. Um... And he uh, he confirmed that Microsoft considered splitting up multiplayer and single player for Halo. He confirmed this. Now this fully vindicates the rumor that I the rumor or the the information I talked about right here on this podcast in late July, where Microsoft was considering not shipping multiplayer this year alongside single player. And I got roasted for this. You can even go back and look at that video. Of people saying you should pull the video. You can go back and look at the video from Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday of this week when they actually announced the delaying of Halo Infinite to 2021. And people were still roasting me that my information was not accurate. And Phil Spencer came out and and verbatim explained exactly what I had talked about on the podcast and finally got some vindication that that information was accurate. And so now I'm going to go back and troll uh, through a trove through whatever you want to call it through all the information I've had since like November about Halo because it all appears to be dead on accurate and try to put this narrative together for people who are curious I don't have any insight right now about when it's going to launch in 2021 um, but I'm going to guess later rather than sooner because if you're going to delay a game you better delay it to get it right and not delay it right I think we all know the narrative there so a lot of questions came in this week my favorite part of the week um, just a bunch and so we are going to uh, just dive right in and kicking things off this week is Mahedi. Mahedi worked for us. He's now on a break because he's doing an internship with, I believe, Qualcomm. Uh, and he says, do you miss me? Yes or no. And the answer is maybe. I miss your memes, Mahedi. I miss your memes. Uh, Tom Worth Jr. says, got a Duo 2 roadmap timeline. So here's the deal. Uh, does a Surface Duo 2 exist? Like uh, physically? Yes. Do I know when they're going to launch it? I, I don't quite know when the Duo 2 or 2-2 two, two Duo 2 Surface 2 Duo, whatever, is going to arrive. Um, I, do the, I do know that it does exist. That's not surprising though. When Microsoft launched the Surface RT many years ago, the, the RT2 was like 
well in deep into its development life cycle. Um, and so that is the same thing here. You got to remember that Microsoft has to draw a line in the sand and this, they drew this line, I think pretty a, a while ago with the Surface Duo and saying, look, now this thing, we got to get it ready. It's got to go to manufacturing and do all that stuff. And so while they're waiting for that to happen, they're not, not working on an, the next gen device. That's pretty like, I guarantee you the iPhone 13 is already pretty far along in development. Like that's just how it, the industry works. Um, so uh, yeah. Uh, next question is, is, how would you explain the Surface Duo's price to an average user? To an average user, I would explain this, that this device is probably not for you. This is an enthusiast device, somebody who knows explicitly what they are trying to get. I don't, you're not going to... I don't think this is a casual device. I think that's that's a, a bad approach. It's an interesting device, and I don't think that you know some consumers aren't going to buy it. But like the casual device is an iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy S twenty. Those are like casual sort of devices, or even high end. Uh, maybe like the iPhone XR is a better example, or SE or something like that. Um, I would not be worried about explaining that fourteen hundred dollar price to the casual user because they are not the target market, and they're not going to be spending fourteen hundred dollars on a smartphone anyways. That's just uh, that's just my general opinion. Uh, C Dit says, is Windows 10 copy paste still broken or am I just going crazy? Win version 2004. Uh, I haven't had this issue on 2004. I'm curious if you are using the clipboard feature. If you hit uh, Windows key, I think it's V. I hit it so many times I can't even think. I think it's Windows key V if I hit it here. Yes. Uh, give that a shot and see if that item shows up there. If it's not, then maybe it's, I don't know. There used to be, for those who aren't aware, there used to be pretty rampant issues with copy and paste in Windows 10. They did finally fix it, and he is seeing that they are uh, showing back up again. I can't tell you that you're crazy because I don't know what you're explicitly seeing, but try the copy paste uh, with Windows V and, and take a look and see what you see in there. Uh, Thrust Bucket says, do you know, or do you think it's possible that Microsoft still does not have a fern date internally for the Series X launch? It's odd they would announce uh, that a month, but not a date. Well, there's multiple things. Um, they have, they absolutely have target dates, right? They have the wheels in place. Look at, the, here's the example. Look at the controller that is already at retail places in giant boxes that says do not open until X date. It takes time for inventory to get to the retail shelves like it doesn't just magically come off the, the manufacturing line and then show up at best buy like it's a long journey across the ocean through customs through the distribution network get it to the retail stores and then get it to the retail stores in enough that the volume is there to satisfy the initial demand to the best of their ability so that they sell through that process absolutely takes time now I firmly believe that they know roughly a date that they are targeting. It's usually like, they typically like Tuesdays, but that's not a guarantee. Well, actually, you say sometimes they like Fridays too uh, for hardware. So I don't quite know. They absolutely have a date target. And what they're going to be waiting for is making sure that inventory is going to align to that date. They can't remember. It can't be super late in November because that that's, gets into Thanksgiving and some other holiday stuff. And so it's not going to be super late in November. I might guess it'd be the first half uh, is when I would expect that. That being said, it could slip. So to answer your question with a complete dodge, as I just did, I think they have targets, obviously the month of November, and then they're just waiting for the ramp up and starting the actual delivery of the consoles uh, just to pick the actual date before they go live. Uh, Mr. PKI says, uh, a longtime listener for sure, uh, do you think 343 chose to delay Halo Infinite release until 2021 based on the public feedback that they received from the July Xbox game showcase? Is it possible that they are delaying the release to ensure they can simultaneously release the campaign and multiplayer options that they were publicly stated after the showcase? So basically, to boil that question down is, are they delaying so that they can launch multiplayer and single player together? interesting thought considering that phil spencer just said hey they're they're not gonna they they consider not shipping them together and i believe in that same interview he followed up and said if they do that it doesn't really feel like a halo game and so i believe that is potentially part of it i think there's a lot of reasons why this game got delayed um, and i think this was a conversation that started long before um last week this wasn't something that they sat down and said hey you know on tuesday we're going to delay this game this was a there was this was a narrative that was boiling up and manifesting uh for a while because it, the game was clearly behind. If you looked at the demo, here's an interesting thing too. Go look, go back and I watched the the initial Halo Infinite trailer that I think they showed off at E3 2019. And then go back and show, watch what they showed off on uh, in July. Like it's vastly different, like in, in degrading in quality. 
So what they showed off in E3 2019 was very clearly super polished, um, likely not running exactly on Xbox Series X. It had to have been running on a PC. Uh, it, it just is not representative of the quality that we saw in July. And it, it's an interesting look. And so I think it was absolutely delayed for the right reasons because if they would have launched this game uh, this fall, with or without multiplayer, it would it just... It wasn't going to be a great game, or at least visually it wouldn't be a great game. It could have a great story and great mechanics, but at the end of the day, if it looks like it's from 2014, that's not a great look for something that Microsoft has been hyping up for like five years or something like that. Asbat says, do you think that Microsoft will release the manufacturing, uh, will increase the manufacturing of the Xbox One S? You can't get one from their site for 30 days. It's not... Uh, If not, what is the likelihood of them stealth dropping the Series S when announced? So there's a massive backup in some of the manufacturing stuff. I tried to buy a pair of Surface headphones in retail stores. Good luck. Um, You can't really find much of anything. And so it would not surprise me to see that. I don't know if they're going to ramp it up, but they're definitely already said they're going to continue to make it because to your point, it is actually hard to get a hold of on Xbox console. A ton of them sold in the last quarter when the, you know, when everyone started staying home in gaming, we saw massive increases in Microsoft's earnings for gaming revenue revenue from their software and services and that was related to a lot of hardware purchases and people just saying hey look I'm bored at home I need a console and the Xbox One S is really cheap let's just go buy it and to your point uh, you can't really get one so I don't know if they're going to ramp it up but they're definitely going to there's more on the way I do know that for sure uh JNBCK says curious on your opinion do you think the duo will be successful who would this be for I think it's going to the major question is is how do you define success right is this Microsoft, what I can tell you what Microsoft wants. Microsoft wants this thing to be an iconic device that changes what we see in the industry. It's sort of like the Surface Pro. The Surface Pro was not the first device to be a tablet and, and supported a kickstand, but it, it changed an industry primarily, in my opinion, mostly because I think the resolution along with the form factor just kind of found that nice uh, sweet spot. The question is, will the Surface Duo have that same appeal and ability to do that? Remember, it took Microsoft three iterations to get the Surface Pro right, and we are in the first iteration of the Surface Duo will they hang on for the long haul that's a good question i think microsoft will sort of hold on to this and keep producing it and keep going forward for a while mostly because they need something in that space to at least highlight their own software and services in the mobile space about why it's a better experience um but to answer your question, will I think it be a successful? The problem is I don't know what Microsoft is classifying as success here. Is it creating noise and putting them back on the map for potential mobile options? If that's the the, the quest, then yeah, then that is going to be successful. Is it to sell 10 million units? I don't know if that's going to be the case. Um, to his point, he says, I can't see people shelling out $1,400 when you can reasonably use it to replace your phone. Um, speaking of phone, getting a phone call in the middle of a podcast, pretty awesome. Uh, I I sort of ag- agree here. Like this is, I mentioned it earlier. This is not a casual device. This is somebody with explicit intent going out to buy it. Uh, Ethan says, Ooh, three questions, loving it. Uh, I noticed marketing materials for the service do aren't highlighting the xCloud touch controls when the device is in 3DS mode, Nintendo 3DS mode. Uh, do you think this feature is in development or shelf? We know it's in development. Microsoft actually showed it off at their game, what was it, the gaming event or gaming development event, GDC event, whatever it's called, in early August. They showed how this can be done with touch controls. I absolutely think that those are coming to the service do. It would be a, a crime if they didn't, although I still, well, I can't have it. Uh, I need to, if if I get my hands on one, see if the Razer Kishi actually works with the Duo. I'm not convinced that it will. And so that will be interesting, mostly because I got to look at where the USB-C is and then the hinge mechanism. Um, and then you also have devices like this where it potentially could work, but it could be awkward where you put the Duo up here and have the multi-display. It might be really top heavy. I don't know. These are all questions um, that I have right now. And of course, you can use it over Bluetooth just without that. Um, But, you know, if you're talking mobile gaming, it would be nice to have touch controls on the Surface Duo. I think that is a smart place. And I think Microsoft knows that. So I would expect that to arrive sooner rather than later. Uh, Will says, honestly, what are the compelling reasons to spend money and get an Xbox Series X this year? Good question. Because if Halo Infinite is not launching and that's why you wanted to buy one, um, there may not be a compelling reason. Heck, there may not have been a compelling reason anyways because the game was supposed to launch cross-generation, remember? It was supposed to be, well, it still is going to launch in the original X or the Xbox One and the Series X. The reasons why you might want to buy one this year is that you're still going to get perform- performance improvements for traditional games that you're already playing. And so that is, you know, the optimized for Series X, you're going to get better frame rate, you're going to get um, potentially ray tracing depending on the game and title and all that good stuff. So it's a good question if you're looking at buying 
exactly new titles but if you just want the best xbox experience that's going to be the reason why you would want to purchase one this year and it's just like any other piece of hardware you're an early adopter you know what you're getting if you want to buy an early adopter just like any console launch there's not always a ton of games um, i think when the 360 launch it was like five or six titles uh and, and didn't have many i don't know if it had any backwards compatibility i can't remember at that time um but yeah there's not a the narrative to buy one this year is because you want one is going to be the best reason to buy one not because there's ex, you know specific reasoning uh, on how microsoft is doing a lot of this stuff and so eric k says hi brad odd question do you remember when tvs were tvs and computers were computers now we have tvs that can do things a computer can do uh and a lot of things to tvs and and it's just crossing over where will it end it'll end when this is a full-fledged computer it'll end when just every display is either a tv or a computer i mean the line between a TV and a computer today is very, very slim. I mean, I can run apps on here. I can run things natively. So is there a difference between a computer and a TV? Nope. Is that ever going to end? Nope. Is it just going to keep getting more blended together? Absolutely. If you want a, a quote unquote dumb TV, good luck. Um, I think Vizio actually sells one without even a TV tuner. It's quite literally just an LCD display, which is personally what I want. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Uh, Turnigan says, uh, some questions regarding the do why us only you can re-roll this podcast a little bit, but that's, that's a traditional Microsoft thing. They've done this time and time again, where they launch in the U S and yeah. Um, is it, is it coming to Europe or is that out of the question? I don't think it's out of the question. I, if it was, well, let me take that back. If it's going to go to another market, usually it's like Canada and then Australia, uh, which always feels odd, but that, and then it makes its way to Europe. Um, I don't think that's out of the question. We will wait and see Microsoft. If they do it, it's typically, I was, I was looking back at some of the previous launches. It was like four to six months after um, it would sometimes show up in Europe. I don't know if, I, I don't candidly know if Microsoft is planning to do it. And then what happened to the limited Im the living image feature in the trailer in October? They showed a lock screen image with flowers that was opening up. Um, I think that just fell on the cutting floor. It might be coming in a later update. You got to remember that Microsoft is promising three years of updates with Android. Now, I don't know how that relates to monthly updates, but definitely annual updates are on the agenda for three years. And the more customization Microsoft adds in, uh, the more more tweaking they're going to have to do to get everything out the door. Eisner says, how successful does the duo need to be internally for Microsoft to allow pandas to working on V2 and V3? V2 is already in the works, so that that's that's off. That doesn't matter right now. Now the question is, will they ship it? I think they will. We don't know yet. Uh, we know Microsoft tends to get it right on V3. He's absolutely correct. Do you think uh, Microsoft leadership is heavily invested in the future of the Duo and willing to be more lenient with poor sales numbers? I would think so. I also think Microsoft is Microsoft isn't dumb. Microsoft knows that when they launch this product, it's not going to outsell the iPhone. It's not going to outsell a Samsung Galaxy S20 That's or Note 20 or whatever they're up to now. Uh, it's not going to outsell those things. It's not designed to outsell those things. Um, it's going to be very interesting to watch to see how well it actually sells. But this also gives Microsoft just their own product to start demoing mobile stuff on and not having to use partner stuff. Not that they don't like their partners, but showing it off on your own hardware always just feels a little bit better. Uh, Jester says, with Halo being delayed, do you think they will drop the Xbox One and be exclusive to the Xbox Series uh, X and S and PC? I don't think so, because then they would have, that would be... If it gets delayed beyond 2021, then I think that's a much more real possibility. Um, I don't think they're going to, that would be unwinding of so much work already done and so many trade-offs already made that at this point, it potentially might be more work to not support those platforms. Or at least, let me qualify that, it might not be more work, but then they're already going to be limited in some capacity about what they're going to be doing on the next-gen consoles. Uh, Rick says, look forward to your podcast every week. Thanks, Rick. I mostly do too. Um, Actually, I almost always do. I look forward to the questions every week. Uh, I've been watching you from when it was called the Redmond Report. Okay, so uh, this podcast used to be called the Redmond Report uh, right when it started for like six months. And then I got some nasty grams in the mail from some legal people and I had to rename it. And so that's how it ended up on the Sam's Report. It wasn't intentionally being that way, but I figured I was less likely to get sued uh, if using that. So first question, uh, what do you think of the pricing of the Surface Duo? I've answered that. I, I, um, he says it may be a little overpriced for what it offers currently, but I feel they had under. But I feel if they had underpriced it, future models uh, would be more other in line and top vendors. I agree. Like they, if they, if they, if they undercut this thing on pricing, that limits their long term potential. Um, Fourteen hundred dollars again is not cheap, and yeah, here we are. Uh, 
Uh, second question, do you think Intel's 11th gen chips really compare with AMD chips? In the past, Intel has failed to deliver on some of their promises. This is a good question. AMD has been kicking butt in terms of performance with their 4000 series and later chips, really putting Intel under the gun. This week, Intel started to kind of show off some of the performance characteristics of their 11th gen chips. I'm not going to, I can't comment on any of them because I don't have them and actually run them through. And Intel has a pretty rich history of promising things that technically are accurate, but realistically don't always materialize for the end user. And so just keep that in mind until real world benchmarks get in the hands of people using devices that we have to kind of take this with a larger grain of salt than usual. And Usman says, looks like a PR nightmare, a next gen console launching Without their key flagship game, I get that they don't make money from console hardware. However, they've seeded the mind share. I agree. This is shaking up to be a pretty PR heavy handed launch. Um, things have not been going smoothly. Microsoft was rocking and rolling and then things have started to unwind a little bit. We're still expecting an August event. And so we will see how Microsoft crafts the narrative about to answer the question of why you should buy a console this fall. They've already saying four generations of games, which is great. I, I, that is an awesome feature. And I'm totally on board with that, but I can already, already play three generations of games. So what fourth generation game am I missing by having an Xbox One X as opposed to the Series X? Those are the questions we look for Microsoft to answer. Um, and he says, anecdotally, when it comes to casual talk about consoles, it just leads towards Xbox has no games. That's the narrative that continues to, to eat Microsoft. Uh, COVID aside, do you think that the console sales are going to be disappointing for Microsoft? That's a tough one. I, we, I don't want to answer that question until we see what all of the cards are in their hand. Microsoft has been holding some stuff back. Phil Spencer even alluded to some Game Pass stuff uh, being announced that it was going to be mind-blowing or something. It might not have said mind-blowing, um, but whatever. Um, so we will see. Once Microsoft has played out their full deck of cards, we know pricing, availability, games, and everything you're going to be able to do on day one. Then we will talk about sales because it's easier to do on the Duo because it's now out and we know the details. Xbox, we don't know all the stuff. So guys, this has been another fun podcast. Thanks for asking all the questions we will be back next week got some good content on the agenda and thanks for tuning out hit that subscribe button catch all of you right back here next time